We've created a large number of car setups for F124 so far, with most of them being race oriented setups. But one of the most common questions I get asked is whether our setups can be used in time trial or just for races. And that answer almost always is their race only car setups. And this is because there is a huge difference in time trial and race setups in this year's F1 game. The very nature of a time trial setup in F124 is to help you put in the fastest lap times possible. And this can mean leaning into some aspects of the handling to extract more performance. This is the case even if those aspects don't necessarily make the cars behave or handle well or realistically. The current time trial car setup meta is to create a car that almost drifts into corners due to over rotation. It may not look natural or be realistic to drive in this way, but it's extremely effective at putting in fast lap times. Using this setup approach allows the fastest drivers to extract insane performance from these cars. However, trying to use this approach in a race or career mode can make things a little bit rough. Sliding into corners by over rotating the car will cause a lot of heat to pass through your tires in a race. And this will overheat your tires, make them wear much faster than they should. And the other factor to consider is player skill or lack of it. Esports drivers and those putting in the fastest time trial times have incredible car control. They can utilize the corner entry oversteer to their advantage to save lap time and they have the skill to manage the oversteer on the exit. This is a driving style that I don't have the skill to tap into despite running the AI pretty high. And I'm not the only one. 99% of F124 players, including myself, will struggle to try and drive in the same way that the top esports drivers do. Utilizing the sliding and over rotation under braking and the oversteer on acceleration is something that's very hard to do. And this is one of the primary reasons why a good time trial setup may not be the best race setup and vice versa. So now I want to run through a time trial setup and a race setup and compare them head to head and see what the actual difference is. And for this example, I'm going to use our recommended car setup and a recommended time trial setup for Silverstone. So starting with the aero differences, you'll see that the time trial setup has a much bigger gap between front and rear wing aero. This promotes much more rotation, allowing the car to rotate better into corners. For our race optimized car setup, this gap has been reduced down from 15 to just 9. And this gives us more stability at the rear of the car, ensuring we don't suffer from as much oversteer or lightness during fast corners. Silverstone is an odd track in that there isn't too much difference in overall downforce levels between the race and time trial setup. At other tracks, you'll find that the time trial setups have higher levels of downforce compared to a race setup. And typically, I'll reduce the aero of both front and rear to allow for greater top speed during a race. Moving on to the transmission, there is a bigger difference between the two setups here. The time trial setup utilizes lower off throttle differential and higher engine braking compared to our race setup. This, much like the aero setup, promotes more rotation during the corner entry phase. The combination of low rear downforce, high engine braking, results in that drifting effect that can be seen in some of the fastest time trial hot laps. Watering this down for a race setup will result in a much more stable car under braking and a slightly more realistic approach to the corner turn-in phase. In previous F1 games, the suspension geometry was actually much different between time trial and race setups, but in F124 things are much closer. It's almost always currently faster to run as much camber as possible, meaning all the way to the left. This approach will provide more mechanical grip, resulting in faster minimum corner speeds. Higher camber levels will wear out our tyres faster during a race, but the performance gain often outweighs that excess tyre wear. If you were starting to move the camber further right, you would lose more performance in comparison to the amount of tyre life you gain. The toe setup is one area where race and time trial setup does differ a bit, mainly with the rear toe in. Time trial setups thrive when there's good rotation, however during a race consistency is much more important. Adding some rear toe in will make the car's rear much more stable. This can be beneficial during a race to prevent the rear from sliding as much and can prevent some cases of snap oversteer. The amount you want to add does vary from track to track with some tracks requiring very little while others, much like Silverstone, benefiting from a bit more toe in. The suspension setup is very important in F124 and can really change how your car behaves on track. Stiffer setups and stiffer anti-roll bars are great for time trial as they promote responsiveness and can remove understeer. 
However, this route, especially the stiff anti-roll bars of 2121, which is common for a time trial setup, can result in instability during the middle and end of a corner. Running anti-roll bars of 2121 during a race can lead to snap oversteer, especially through longer corners, which can overwhelm the anti-roll bars. For a race car setup, I'd recommend softening the suspension slightly and softening the anti-roll bars quite a lot. Moving the ARB setup two to sometimes 10 clicks to the left will help make your car much more stable. It is also important to soften the rear anti-roll bars as these are much more responsible for that snap oversteer that I mentioned. We'll then need to raise the ride height a bit because we've softened the suspension. Softer suspensions allow for more compression, which can mean extremely low ride heights result in the bottom of your car making contact with the track. Raising the ride height slightly gives a little bit more room for your suspension to compress. The brake setup is a part of your car setup that may not need much change between a race and time trial setup. In F124, after the handling patch, you should pretty much always be running 100% brake pressure in every single session. You can then set the brake bias to a place that you feel comfortable with. I have actually adjusted the brake bias in our Silverstone setup from 54% to 55% for the race. This was to add a little bit more stability under braking and to avoid any rear locking. This is mainly targeted around safety as any rear locking during a race can result in a big spin if it catches you out. Now, tire pressures will often need to be adjusted when converting a time trial setup to a race setup. Most time trial setups use max tire pressures, which provides less drag and good responsiveness without much of a performance penalty. When it comes to a race setup, Tie pressures are a great tool for controlling temperatures. This Silverstone setup, as an example, doesn't actually feature too much change in pressures as the tires do run hot at this track. However, some tracks like Monaco will require much lower pressures to help increase your temperatures and bring them into the optimal temperature window. Now I mentioned at the start of this video that most of our recommended car setups are no good for time trial and are mainly for races only. But in that case, what makes a good time trial setup? Well, some tracks require some really unique time trial setups, but there is a kind of agreed on trend for most time trial setups to allow you to be fast at the majority of circuits. This route includes raising the aero higher than you would for a race, running stiff suspension setups and minimal geometry. A good starting point for any time trial car setup is to increase the aero higher than you would for a race and also ensure there's a large gap between the front and rear wings, normally 10 to 20 points. Then utilize a higher on throttle diff setup to promote maximum traction and better rotation on corner exit. Set your engine braking at or close to 100% and the off throttle differential low to promote maximum rotation. Use a left, 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 left suspension geometry setup at almost every track. And then opt for a stiff front suspension, soft rear, normally around 41 and five or some close variation of this. Then maximize your anti-roll bar stiffness up to 21, 21. Although some tracks do require a slightly lower rear ARB setup. Lower your ride height as much as possible. And some tracks can benefit from an incredibly low ride height. It's actually below say 20 at the front and 55 at the rear. Then set your brake pressure to 100% and your brake bias as far rearward as you can before the car becomes too unstable. And finally, maximize your tire pressures at pretty much every single track. Now, if you were to utilize this approach for a time trial, or if you were to download a time trial setup and try to use it for a race, there are a few key things that you should change. I would always recommend lowering the aerodynamics for both front and rear to increase your maximum top speed. Then reduce that high gap that I mentioned of 10 to 20 down to somewhere in the region of 10. For your transmission, I normally always lower the on throttle differential to help with a little bit of slower speed traction, and then increase the off throttle diff and lower the engine braking to say somewhere between 50 and 80 to kind of limit some of that over rotation at the corner entry phase. For the geometry, I genuinely keep this the same, although I do sometimes recommend increasing the rear toe for a little bit of additional stability if you need it. For the suspension, as I mentioned, I'd soften the front and stiffen the rear a little bit, and then soften the anti-roll bars away from 2121. Then if you are going this approach, you will need to increase the ride height and you might need to increase it quite a lot if you're softening the suspension a lot. For the brakes, things are very similar, but adjust the brake bias slightly forward to remove any rear locking if needed. 
And with the tires, I'll start with them set to maximum and adjust them away from that if the tires are running too cold. Now that's gonna round out this comparison of time trial and race setups. And I'm kind of hoping that this video will give you the tools to take any time trial setup and convert it into a pretty good race setup. I'm also hoping it will answer the question that I mentioned at the very beginning of whether our recommended race setups can be used for time trial, which is a pretty firm no, but hopefully this video has explained why. As always, smash that like button if you found anything in this video helpful and let me know in the comments below what your process to creating a car setup is. Do you dip into the time trial leaderboards and download a setup from there? Or do you kind of take one of our setups and, and tinker it to your liking? Let me know in the comments. But for now guys, I will see you all on track.